and especially you, you guys who are just new to trading in general, and, and, and your account is small because you want to start small and see if it works for you. Okay, well, when, when I discuss the bond market, all right, the markets that I follow are the 30-year bond, the 10-year note, and the five-year note, all right? And of those three, the highest risk is in the bond, okay, the 30-year bond. Your 10-year note, you have less risk. And then you have the lowest risk in, in the five-year notes. Now, of course, the flip side of that is typically you get more bang for your buck when you trade the bonds. You know, the bonds may trigger a price entry, and next thing you know, you got four or five ticks in the trade, while your five-year notes are still stuck, and maybe you made 15 bucks on the trade. But, you know, I think... Most of us as traders want to identify our risk first. You know, how much can I lose? You know, I can always take care of the winners, but how much can I lose? And you guys that have the, the smaller accounts, all right, look really closely at starting out trading these five-year notes. All right, now, through this presentation, and, and I'm basing this really for the guys who follow the you know, Danny and Bob have built the MTS IM Pro Room. And what, what I'm trying to do is, is help those people to use my information as, well, well let's see, how, how can I word that? I, I, I am kind of gearing this for the MTS clients, all right? Um, so let's go over some definitions. And this will also, of course, apply for as I talk for the next hour or so. But a tick. A tick is equal to 3125. Okay, when I say a tick, all right, and if I'm in the MTS IM Pro Room and I say, hey, let's put a five tick stop on this, okay, I mean a, a, a price increment equal to 3125. All right, well, bonds move in full ticks. All right, bonds will go from 150 even to 1501, that's worth 3125. Ten-year notes move in an increment of basically one half a tick. Okay, there are still 32 ticks in in a ten-year note point. All right, now I know people out there, and it seems like more retail people and non-bond traders who will talk about 1564s. All right, well. Again, as we talk about trading bonds, and I know they put a thing on here because that's what the pros trade. Well, if, if, if you talk to a pro on the floor, you never hear them talk about 1764s. They'll say, I lost five and a half ticks on that. All right, so in my lingo, as we go through this presentation, 10 years move in increments of one half a tick, worth 1563 roughly. But the tick is 3125. Five years move in a quarter tick increment, which is like 763. But again, when I talk about a tick, it's 3125. All right, and and you know, I mean, this is important. There's increments, and there's ticks. And when I'm in the MTS room talking about, you know, hey, our target on this is 17 ticks, or Hey, just remind you that trade just made you 21 ticks. I'm talking about an increment worth 31.25. And I just kind of mentioned this, but a point moving in any one of these, all right, is a is thousand dollars. And there's 32 ticks in that move. All right, now this gets a little more into why I think there's less risk as you come in the curve from 30 year bonds to 10 year notes to five year notes. In bonds, you have to put a four or five tick stop on your trade. All right, that's just the nature of the beast. When, when there was pit trading and there was a more efficient market, you could scratch a trade. You could take a one tick loser. When the, when the market first went to electronic, it was, it was a three tick stop on the screen. But as more trade leaves the floor and the efficiency is leaving the market, you have to widen your stops out. And if you're going to try and trade the bond market with less than a four or five tick stop, 
your chance of getting stopped out on a lot of your trades are very, very high. All right, so let's look at that. You could, you're risking 125 to 156, you know, each contract you're trading. Now, I always advocate having at least a couple of contracts working. All right, I think it's a losing game to, to, to trade a one lot. So, you, your entry price is a two lot. You put a five tick stop on it. 156 times two is 300 something. For a small account or a risk-averse trader, it's a lot of money. All right, 10 years, you can risk two, two and a half tick uh, stop. So 62.50 to 93.75 a contract. Well, look what you've done, okay? You've brought down your risk. You can play what's gonna be the hottest sector for the next year or so. You can play it and risk 125 on your trades. Now, here's where it gets even better, all right, for you guys with, again, small accounts or your very risk averse traders. Five-year notes. You can, you can trade them with a one tick or a tick and a half stop, all right? I've been using a tick and a quarter stop lately, all right, but I'm risking like, like $37, all right, per contract to trade five-year notes, all right? And as one of my old clients pointed out to me, too, Okay, your margin is much, much lower on five-year notes than 30-year bonds. So again, you guys that are saying, okay, I'm interested in trading the bonds, but you know, I create a small account, or I or I trade crude and my, my money's tied up in crude. All right, well, then look at five-year notes here. Because it gives you a way to play what's gonna be again a very, very hot market, but keeping your risk low. All right. Let me uh, move on. Um, all right, and I put these together because, uh, I mean, this is a bond chart, all right? And this was a bond chart, I think, of the trade on Thursday, but just kind of take a look at it. And, and then here's the 10 year notes, and here's the five year notes, okay? I mean, it, it, it's the same, it's the same trade. Okay, so, you know, if you're, if you're concerned, say, well, wait a minute, you know, we're talking bonds, we're talking five years, all right, they tend to move the same way. I mean, are there times where, where they're, they're trading the curve, okay, where they're buying bonds and selling fives or, you know, you know selling uh, fives, you know, I'm trying to give examples. Of course there are, all right, but, you know, most times, nine days out of ten, you can be pretty confident trading the outright futures knowing that that's the game. All right, so that's just trying to give you, you know, a couple examples. Now, again, we're trying to do this to help you guys in the MTS room. Okay? I send MTS my newsletter, okay? I, I post a newsletter to my clients each evening. All right, I'll do one Sunday morning, and they'll use that Sunday night and Monday. And I'll send them one Monday evening, which they'll use Monday night and Tuesday. Okay, and I do that five, five days a week. I send the MTS group the letter a couple times a week. All right, and I tell them, you know, go ahead and take out what you want. All right, so some days they may cut out the bond comment and the bond levels, and post that, all right? One day they might cut out the S&P comment and the S&P levels and post that. One day they might take the five-year comment and the five-year levels and post that, all right? Now, what you guys have to do, all right, is in the MTS room, you can pre-market videos from, I mean, several sources, all right? and this is going to be in your hands before the market, but before the S&P opens. I'm not sure when they post it, but they have my approval to post it as soon as they get it. All right. And you guys should look for this because, you know, my thing with, with trading, as long as the information is usable information and you aren't getting yourself overloaded with information, I mean, that's what a trader wants. 
So what what you'll do, for example, when if they if they share with you the bond information, all right, well, read the comment. Now you you, you can't read it here, I think it's too small, but the comment is an overview of what could happen. All right, and then the levels are basically I'm gonna flip slides here because I just realized, okay, there's two main parts, the comment section and the level section. Now, you can re read this along with me, but there's, there's comments for all four markets, the bonds, tens, fives, the S&P. The trades discussed in the comment are not necessarily expected to play out in the session that was provided for, but by their nature, they provide a bigger picture view of the market. All right, and these trades ideas should also be flipped in the minds of traders who like to go against the prevailing trend. All right, for example, a comment such as trade above 118.18 goes after 119.02 alerts the fader of 119.0 of what 118.18 of what the risk is. All right, now again, what we're trying to do is help you guys in the MTS room who are getting my information. All right, so let's so let's start let's start with that first of all. Okay, read the comment that they post, and then compare it. All right, you know you know what are you hearing from the other bond information in the room? All right, and just see see if it agrees. All right, if if it agrees, what it does is it gives you more confidence. All right, let's say you're let's say you're a small trader. You like to do twos and threes, but you read that I'm bullish on the market, and the other information you get in the MTS room is also bullish on the market, and you say, well, I'm going to trade an extra contract today, and I'm going to make sure that every time I get a, a reason to buy this market, I'm buying this market, all right? Now, on, on, the, on the other side of the coin, let's say the information is mixed. Some of the MTS guys are saying this thing's going straight down. We're going to 147, and one guy says I have no opinion, and I come in and I, I, I have an upside bias. Well, you have to look at that and say, gee, this is pretty mixed. I got to be careful. I got to make sure I just pick some spots and scalp because nobody seems to have a, a real opinion of the market. And it's the same thing that, that, that you know, back when the pitch rating was big. It's the same thing. You go in the pit and you look at the brokers. And let's say you got 17 brokers. And you got 13 bidding and, and you have four offering. And you say, well, geez, all right, then I'm buying. I'm bidding. If you go in there and you have 17 brokers and you have eight bidding, eight offering, and one guy's hands folded, you say, okay, the smart money doesn't know what to do here. They're opposing. I'm being careful. Same thing you want to do here, okay? I mean, but but read read that comment, all right? Because that's going to give you both the bigger picture and it will give you trades. Um, maybe you already read this, but you know, again, what I'm trying to do is give you guys the point in the market where things can start to happen. If I say something like until the bulls start to work on one through eight eleven tell you to excited about the upside and eventual test of 140.27. So what does that mean? If the bulls get above 138.11, you're going to target 140.27. And if you're choosing to fade anything between 11 and 140.27, you're taking pretty good risk in the market. Okay? I mean, and you know, I mean, that's, you have, you, you have to incorporate this in your trading plan. All right. I mean, I am right far more than I'm wrong. This has to be part of your plan. If you have resistance at 140.27, you have a, you have an extra reason to reverse up there. As for the downside, I'd like to see the bears take out 136.20. All right. So what, what else does this tell you? If you're between 11, 138 to 11, and 136.20, okay, that's like a neutral market. Nothing's going to happen exciting in there. You're not going to establish any big trend in there. 
So you put your trades on, put them on, and try and scalp them. All right. Don't start to add the winners. Don't start to add, you know, just, hey, I found a trade. I'm taking it. Nothing's going to happen until it gets outside of that range. All right. And then the actual levels. Okay. Now, the pivot. The pivot sets my bias. Now, again, in the MTS room, you get pre-market videos. People are coming in, they're putting stuff in, putting stuff in. All right, well, check my pivot. And that sets my bias. And if we're above the pivot, you're better off trying to find ways to buy the market. And again, if the other stuff in the MTS IM Pro room is saying, hey, buy all you can. Back up the truck and buy, buy, buy. And we're above my pivot, then do it. Right, do it. If if you know, and, and again, I mean, if we're if we're below my pivot, and your own work tells you that you should be buying dips, well, you, you gotta respect your own work first. But I would certainly hope that you would say, okay, well, I like trading five lots, but you know, I, he's he's bearish here. I'm bullish. I'm gonna trade smaller. I'm gonna do a two or three lot. Um, majors. All right, those are the strongest levels. All right, you know, always consider placing resting orders at majors. All right, I mean, I have clients in, in the grain room who just get my newsletter, look for my stronger levels, and just park orders up and down the order book at them. They put in the, the fair stops we discussed earlier and just see what happens. All right, but those are the strongest levels. All right. You know, traders who trade size can put your, your most size on at majors. All right, the, 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 the stars, the, the little tiny asterisks, they're strong levels. All right, and in the current market, going back six years, you can fade those. All right, and I, and I just try and, you know, I, I, can, I try and explain what the little, you know, star asterisks mean by using a, a size example, all right? But if you're a 15 lot trader, if that's what you'd like to do it in the market, and that you trade that at majors, you might drop down to seven or eight if you're trading these levels. But you can certainly fade them, all right? You can initiate trades off them. I mean, and again, as you go through the MTS room, and you hear somebody talk about, hey, you know, we, you know, we got to buy 140, 116 in bonds. That's a great place to buy. And my level says 140, 113. You say, okay, he's got 13, he's got 16. I'm buying 14s and 15. All right, levels without anything. All right, those are the weakest levels. All right, back in the pit days, the guys would use them. But again, as market's gotten less and less efficient. Right. I use them just as a guidepost. Sometimes I'll have an asterisk level at, at you know, 15 and a target up at 02. And there'll be a level with nothing next to it at 20. But as trade passes through 20, it gets me a little more thinking that we're going to the 02. All right? But it's hard for me to recommend that you, that you use them to enter trades at. Um, now, these are the key prices, all right? These are transition prices, and they act as targets, and then they become the key to next direction, all right? Now, I always advise covering positions when you hit, when you hit these levels, and then get to the sideline and see which camp controls it. Now, invariably, I'm squeezing trades through them. I'm trying to initiate positions off them, but the, but, but the potential chop is very good at these levels because that's what they do. They attract everybody. They come in and they fight over the level. And it's better off for us to just step aside. All right. But again, if in the MTS room, if somebody says one like well, what you know, 150, 17, all right, that's a target. That's a target. And on my newsletter, I have 150, 107, and it's labeled this way. You say, hey, he's got a two, and that might be a top. I'm going to hold this trade till it gets there, and then I'm going to fade it. 
All right, but these are very, very key levels in the market. Um, you know, I have a lot of option trader clients who like these because it helps them to figure out if they still have the right bias as they're trading their options. Um, let's see. Yeah, and I'm just uh, explaining and, and, you know, let's see. I mean, you, you can probably read this along with me. Um, all right, support and resistance. I, I've been posting a newsletter for probably 14 years. I just started to use these terms in the last maybe year or so. Um, I think everybody in this room knows what they are, but, you know, they're, they're new on my letter. And what's, it's, it's just because what, what I like to do is identify levels. All right? I don't want to be close. When my clients say, man, you said it was going to 10, we hit 08. Well, I'm kind of pissed off. All right? I want to print 10. But sometimes I can't get that fine with the level. There's just too much around it. All right? And it, it could be 15 to 11. So I'm just going to say on my newsletter, support. All right? And, you know, and this is, you know, this is how you have to trade it then. Uh, cash yields. All right, I can go years and not not uh, even reference the cash market, but sometimes it becomes very important, and you'll you'll see on the newsletter. And sometimes I know what the yield is. Sometimes it'll be a question mark next to it, but those are very very important. And 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 you guys who are just kind of like your part time traders because you're trading fruit and, and it takes your full attention or you're trading gold and gold takes your full attention. All right. To look at the letter and look for majors, look for cash yields and to a lesser degree pivotals and just park orders up and down the book at those, you're probably going to be in a good trade eight times out of ten. Uh, watch. All right. I know it's going to be important, but I'm not sure how. But if I'm in a trade, if I'm short and we approach a watch level, let's say I'm short, I'm, I'm tapping the brakes, okay? And I'm getting ready to maybe take some profits. And I'm trying to just see what happens down at that level, all right? I mean, I, I didn't use watch for the first 12 years doing my newsletter, but markets change. And sometimes you have to figure, you have to remind yourself what happens at this level. You know, how important is this to what I'm doing today? All right, so that's what that's what watch means, and targets are just that. All right, they're, they're targets, but unless there's something else by it, it's not like resistance. I I had a trader years ago who traded a hundred lots in the ten year note pit, and he started getting my newsletter. He came up to me one day and he goes, "Man, I got smoked today," and I says, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah." He says, "The market hit your target, and I loaded up up there, and it just kept going." And I says, well, it's a target. I said, it's not resistance. You know, so unless it's an asterisk by it or something, it's just a target. All right, so, you know, again, I, I, don't, put, I don't give the MTS group this letter every night. All right, but I, it, it might go to them Sunday, Wednesday. You know, it might go to them Sunday, Tuesday, but I'll look for it. Okay, look for it and apply it to what you're getting in the MTS room. All right, now you see my channel on the MTS room. And as I've, you know, as I've long said, I, you know, to me, the MTS room, you know, that's your pick. You know, you guys are in there all day. You're trading along with them. You get information, you name it, it comes at you. Grains and metals and NASDAQ and cash this and s and that, and it's all there for you. Um, I, I have my room, as I kind of view as like, you know, you're, you're, you're watching a football game on TV, and the game gets kind of lousy, you know, and you just, boy, okay, well, you know what, let me flip over and watch this game. So you come over to my room, and you see what's going on in my room. Now, I've kind of changed how I, I've used my room, but we can use this to kind of see what you guys want. All right, I've typed in, I'm going to be in my room from, you know, nine to, you know, from nine o'clock. And 
giving you guys the heads up to come in. And I try and pick spots in the room where it's going to be busy. I try and trade through the, the jobs report the first Friday of the month. I try to take you through the FOMC minutes. You know, I'm, 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 trying to get, I'm trying to help you navigate through markets where a lot of people are saying, oh, don't trade, don't trade. All right? Well, believe me, I mean, in my room, we are trading. So, but it was more helpful to you guys to just say, well, look, you know, can we just contact you and say, hey, you know, we're kind of dragging over here. Can we pop in? I'm not beyond doing that. You know, I mean, you know, Danny approached me a couple of years ago about helping provide some content about the bond market for the MTS group. All right. And I, I become friends with Danny. I like Bob. They, I mean, these guys care about, about their members. All right. So I, I want to provide content. And help you guys but I need to know the best way I can help you and if giving you guys the, the freedom to say well you know what we'd, we'd rather get a hold of you if we get confused or something all right you know let's make it work but what's the lingo and, and you guys think back to the trade like yesterday yesterday when mini Dow was trading above 200 I said we're buying these 94s all right well, what happened? 94 is filled and 83 low or 85 low, and the trade popped up. We were able to take a profit, trail a stop. Told you guys that bonds got below 06, all right, they were going to break. Said there's nothing down there till the lower 13. What did bonds do? Traded 5 4, went down to 13, all right, you got 21 ticks in that trade, all right, and if you guys think back to the, the trades that you've gotten from me, in these little half-hour increments I give you, you're getting some sizable winners. And if you aren't putting on the audio when I come in, well, let's do it. I mean, do it. Because the MTS room is always going to be there for you. You know, I mean, and the, the advice and the information to help you make money, always going to be there. But my room is just going to be there, you know, again, half hour here, half hour there. All right, you know, come on in and join in and get some of these trades. Now, when I say puke, because you'll hear me say, well, I'm going to buy this dip, and if it gets down here, I'm going to puke them. All right? Well, that's where my stop's going to be. That's, the, you know, that's what puke means. All right? You know what? It's 1032. Let's do this. Let's take, uh, let's take a little five-minute break. That, uh, it's 1032. So let's take, a little, let's take a little break. I know uh, I can ramble about this stuff all day. But uh, take a little five-minute break, uh, refill your coffee. I got my, my Singapore mug from Shant. Got to make sure Shant sees it. <laughs> take, take a little five-minute break, and I'll see you guys in five minutes. Okay, thanks, thanks. Uh, let's go back over the lingo I use when I put on the audio in my room on the MTS site. Uh, squeeze to hold a winning trade, all right? I mean, and I, I'm probably the king of the squeezers. And, but, you know, I mean, again, we, we, we talk about, hey, if we, like yesterday, we moved below 150.06, we're going to 149.13, all right? Well, 13 is a place you're supposed to take your profits, all right? Well, invariably, what I do, and when it gets there, I am taking something off, and I'm taking my stop up, but I'm usually squeezing. Now, of course, the guys that reversed at, thir at 13 yesterday, because that was a, a, an asterisk level, uh, they, you know, that was a great trade. All right, but that's what squeeze means. We're trying to take, a, take, take more from, from a winning trade than, you know, I mean, so that's what squeeze means. Now, work or defend a trade. Um, and... Again, and, and, you'll, and you'll hear me say this, okay? And remember, you guys have listened to me when I put the audio on. I usually tell you, well, not you, I always do. I'll tell you, when it gets there, I'm squeezing. All right? Same thing when I enter a trade. You'll hear me say, okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to buy this, this dip in five years uh, to, to 25, but I'm, I'm probably going to work it as low as 22. All right? So what does that tell you? Well, I'm probably not going to use a typical stop. 
If I buy 25s, I now, I, I, I make you something at 23 and a half. Well, you know, but I'm going to keep working the trade down to that 22. All right, that's what defend or, or, or work a trade means. All right, and, and when, you, when you defend a trade, and I think I, I have this on there too. Yeah, I mean, I, let's say I sell, um, you know, bonds at 06. And, I'll, and you'll hear me say, you know, if this doesn't break on me, I'm going to defend it against 11, which means I'm going to sell more at 11. All right, and then you'll hear me say, okay, and I'm, I'm probably going to puke these at 15. Now, a couple things about that. If that doesn't fit your, your risk tolerance, all right, maybe you got to pass on the trade. Okay, I mean, but that's what defend a trade means. Now, lean, right, that's the, that's the price I'm probably going to defend the trade against. All right. Think about lean as like support or resistance. Um, and, you know, I had a tremendous five-year trader. Guy would trade 500 lots in the pit using my stuff. And, and I remember we, we, he talked with me to a group of new traders. And we talked about this concept. And they go, well, that's, well, that's adding to a loser. You can't ever add to a loser. And he just said, and, and, he, and he was not a nice, I mean, face it, pitch traders aren't nice guys. You know, and he goes, he goes, you know, hey, listen for a second. He said, sometimes you just have to get in the market. You have a spot that you would like to get in at, but sometimes the market isn't going to that spot. So you just have to get in. And then if it goes back to the spot, well, that's where you want to get in anyway, so you get in. All right, now... And I don't want to do an educational thing about all that, but I'm just trying to give you some a glossary of terms that I use when I have the sound on in the MTS room, and that's what that's what lean is. Uh, you know, now just for a trade, all right. Like yesterday, I said we get below 06, we're going down to 13. All right, well that's a nice trade, but sometimes we're just trying to pick little scalps, all right. And I just say, hey, this is just for a trade. You know, we're just going to take this. We're just going to try and get in and scalp it. You know, I think back to the thing with the newsletter. You know, we're between levels where things can really start to happen. So, you know, well, let's just trade. Let's just, let's take our 62 bucks here and our 70 bucks here and, you know, our 50 here and let's just trade. So those are terms that, that, that uh, I'll use when I put the sound on in the MTS room. All right. Um... All right, so now it's it's not it, it's not my intention. And when and when MTS approached me about you know talking with you guys and asked me what what I want to talk about, I said just this: I want to try and get people to trade this market. All right, you know, and you know, and, it, and I know bond always has this kind of stodgy connotation to it, but there's always been good trade in the bond market. It's a very technical market. Um, it's always been a very good trade. It's just going to be a better trade um, going forward. And I'm just trying to get some of you guys who have not looked at it to look at it. Um, the, the nature of the way it trades, it, it doesn't always necessitate that you babysit it, especially with the kind of stuff we just talked about here, where you can just say, okay, well, this guy in the MTS room has 19 for resistance and Jack's got 23 with an asterisk next to it. So I'm going to sell some 21s and put a stop at 25 and trade my S&P all day and check back at the close. I mean, you know, it, it, it can be traded that way. Um, I want to explain to you how to use my letter, the parts of it that MTS is going to be posting or has been posting. And I want to explain to you what happens when I put the sound on in my room. And hopefully we accomplish that. It wasn't my intention to sit here and, and teach you how to trade bonds or teach you how I knew bonds were going to break from 06 to 31 um, or whatever it was, 06 to 13. But we got another 15 minutes here. Um, if I can answer any questions, I will. Um, you can go ahead and put them in, and we'll see if I can answer them.
Um, I do want to share one thing as you guys are putting them in, but you know, to get a, a bigger or well, maybe better idea about the, what what I do, and and I and, and I haven't talked, you know, I, you know, but just to give you a little background, but I got my membership of the Board of Trade in 1996. Uh, I traded night bonds when there was a night bond session. When the Dow pit opened, I traded the Dow, and I've just kind of stayed in those markets ever since. Um, that's what I trade. Um, um, you know, Danny was looking for some information, a, a source to help, you know, his room, help his customers with the bond market. He approached me, uh, you know, he's, he's a great guy. I think we all know that. Uh, he cares so much about you guys getting good information and making money. And that's, that's why I keep providing information for him. I know I'm much more limited than the other people in the room. I know people will post stuff every second in there. You know, the nature of the way I trade, I, I just can't do that. Um, but if you go to brosonbonds.com, that's my website, um, there's, a, there's a Jack's Corner section on there. And that's where I put little articles, usually on Sundays. And if you go through those, you're going to pick up, I think, a pretty fair grasp of the way I trade and look at the market. Now, I have three services, my newsletter only, the newsletter and trading room, and then my education package. And for those of you who are attending this, I will we'll give you a discount of, and you can read it there, I mean, we're knocking off one quarter of the price, 25% for any one of those. All right. Now, now, to get that discount, you have to email Bob at Mr. Top Step and copy me on it. And that has to be done by noon next Friday. I mean, I, I know this stuff gets recorded and archived, and I, I've had guys contact me. Well, you offered your service for 150 bucks, and I, well, yeah, you know, but these are futures. <laughs> you know, and futures move fast, and, you know, those days are gone. But I will give you a discount of twenty five percent off anything I offer. But you got to email Bob at MrTopStep dot com and copy me on it, and then we can set you up. Now, because you guys are a unique group, all right, you're in the Mister Top Step room all day. I I understand that. So if we got to mix and match stuff, all right. Well, hell, you know, hell, you know, hell, I'll give you an education class as part of the fee. Or, all right, you want the room just from 7 o'clock in the morning until 8.30 in the morning. Fine. I mean, you guys are MTS customers. I'm, I'll make adjustments for you. And that's how to take advantage of that. All right. Let me, uh, let's pause on questions because, let me see what we got here. Because I saw this thing filling up pretty good here. All right. Somebody asked uh, the way you guys will know when I'll be in the room. What, what, what I do is I, I type into the bros room, and I know it goes over into the MTS room, but I'll say I'll be in the room tomorrow at 8.50. We'll go through the Michigan sentiment number, okay? And that's how you'll know. And you can, you know, so when, 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 when you're in the MTS room, and I'm not positive on this, if you can still click on my name and see my posts, but you can scroll up. My stuff comes in in brown, um, and you can scroll up and see. But that's how you'll know when I'm going to put the audio on in, in my room for you guys. Uh, do bonds track the, the S&P? Um, you know, this, this is always a dangerous question for me to answer. Um, the, the, my best answer for this is this. All right, when you sit down at your trading desk, whatever that is, you start at 8 o'clock in the morning or whatever it is, look at the overnight sessions and see, all right, look at a bond chart, look at an S&P chart and see, you know, did bonds rally from, you know, from 1 o'clock central till 2.30? Did S&P break from 1 to 2.30 or thereabouts? Hmm, maybe inverse trade. 
Maybe, you know, maybe it binds a watch in S&Ps today. But don't, don't ever give yourself a blanket statement. A lot of people, and which, which, which is not what you did, I mean, but I know people are thinking the same question. You know, is there always inverse trade? Is, you know, and, and I, I got to tell you this. When I first started a trade, which was back in the, in the uh, mid-90s, bonds and S&Ps, they both moved together. Because Greenspan was cutting interest rates, so bonds were making the yield go down. Companies, their cost to borrow was low, so they could expand, so stocks were going up, and they moved together. So my advice to you is just before you start trading, look at the overnight session and just kind of see, you know, or, or, or even, even like on the first number, you get a 730 number, all right? You know, they release initial claims. And bonds uptick and S and P downticks. Hmm. Maybe it's inverse trade today. Um, I do think in the current market the S and P is a leader. Sometimes we see the bonds and notes trying to goose the S and P. The other day they did that, and the S and P broke. And, I, and 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 you heard me in the MTS room talk about being short below ninety three, and that that was a nice trade. But the bonds and notes started to uptick, and they were trying to send the S&P lower. Um, somebody asked about bond option liquidity. The, um, you know, the, 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 the clients I have are on the floor, and they're, and they're, mostly, they're mostly in 10-year note options. Um, I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not an option guy. I, I, wish I, 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 I yeah, so I, I can't help you. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. And as far as the the charts, and and you guys saw the, the those were screenshots from my desktop, but I use a five minute bar chart. Um, I don't use indicators. I use a five minute bar chart, and um, and and what what I'm doing in, in the room on the floor. This is why I, I just can't be as engaged with you guys in the MTS room because I'm watching my order books. I'm watching the charts develop. I'm watching that five minute bar built. All right. I'm, I'm watching the pits. I'm listening to the pits. And, you know, but to answer your question, yeah, I, I just, I like a simple five minute bar chart. Um, when numbers come out, like the the jobs report or or big reports, I do switch down to a one minute, so I can see more detail. But um, that's that's what I use. Just a uh, just a five minute bar. Um, and I and I and I'll say this: when 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 I do my analysis at the end of the day, get ready for the next day. I do use a daily chart. And I, and I will go back and look at a weekly chart. All right, I, I, I do. I think, and I think it's important as traders that you get the big picture. And that's what a daily chart or weekly chart will give you. And then you hope when you come in the next day that the scalping picture lines up with that. And, that, and this is an important point. I wanted to try and explain this to you. But, you know, let's say, for example, that you look at your daily charts and weekly charts and you're like, man, this thing is bullish. You know, this thing is bullish. Then you come in the morning and the market's been soft all night and it's, 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 the pivot is above the market and it's below the market. And you say, well, okay, I got a trade with it showing me. And I'm, and I'm a scalper. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not Goldman Sachs. I'm not going to build positions here. So I got to scalp the short side in a, in a big picture upside bias. Well, you better trade small and, and you better not add the winners. Because at any time, that big picture can take over and run that thing back up. Um, you know, to, to learn bond basics, you know, in my opinion, and I'm sure the CME website's got stuff on it, um, you know, I, 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 again, not much of an answer for that. I, I, I believe that I gave you some important basics by giving you fair stops. Um, but I, I, I wish I was more helped you on that. But I think the CB website would certainly help you. Um, you know, you have my email address here too. 
And in, in the sake of not having this thing go, you know, long, it's Saturday. I think we all want to, in my case, hit the tavern. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you have my email address there. And if I don't get to your question and you want to shoot me an email and, hey, you know, do you have any more thoughts on this? Believe me, I'll try and help you, okay? Um, when is the bond pit open? This is a good, good question here. When's the bond pit open? Should a new trader, should, yeah, it's a good question here. The, well, the, the hours the pit is open are 7.20 Central and they close at 2 Central. That's when the pit's open. Now, there is very good bond trade from about 1 o'clock Central in the morning, 1 a.m. Central when London opens, and trade gets another good wave of trading at 5 a.m. Central, and New York gets to their desks. And then, of course, in the pit session, there's good trade. The, you know, and as, as I try to answer the question, if I have two comments on it. If I was not moderating a trading room that my clients were geared into being there at 7 o'clock in the morning, or, and I'll say this too, if the floor is no longer efficient for me to go down there, all right, I would start my room in the morning at, at about 4.30 Central, 4.45 Central, and I would trade from 5 o'clock Central until about 11 o'clock Central. That's the prime time for trading bonds. Um, do bond traders tend to look at oil or gold? Um, you know, I can't tell you what bond traders look at. I mean, what, what, what I look at is the bond market. I look at the bond market and I look at the S&P. Um, you know, I, I, I can't, and, and you know, when I, when I, when I talk, and I have clients in the pit that have been trading much longer than I have. And they're much more accomplished traders than I have. I mean, they'll come up to me and they'll say, you know, and, and, and usually it's rolled over. And they'll say, geez, you know, I was up 13 grand today and, you know, now I'm down three. Yeah, I mean, that's money I can't even think about, you know. But I, I will say that they never have mentioned to me, you know, hey, did you see gold today? Did you see oil today? So the best I can answer that. Um, do I get edge from reading the tape? Must be a stock trader, <laughs> because uh, I mean, my, I mean, but I call it as the order book. I, I call it the order book, and I do think that, you know the, the dome, your bids and your offers. I do think watching the order book is very important. Now, from the nature of the, the hand I've dealt myself, okay, with clients. So what I'm doing the course of the day is I'm keeping an eye on the currency pits. I'm keeping an eye on the, on the option pit, the, the financial pit, the S&P pit, all right? And, and I'm going back and forth throughout the day all right, down to the pits because I do get information from the guys on the floor that I pass on to my clients. So I can't watch the order book, all right? But you guys that can, watch it because the guys in the pit get so many trades off it. And I think it's very important that you, you watch the order book. Now, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, I think, I think watching it when, it when it approaches levels that I mentioned on that newsletter, I think it's very important. All right? But watch it at, at highs and lows. All right? I mean, I have, I have a trader in the five-year pit, a phenomenal trader. And you know, he teases me. I mean, you know, we'll be at the lows. And I, I admit, I mean, I love momentum. I love breakouts. We make a new low. I'm, I'm selling. I'm hitting bids. I'm selling. And next thing I know, it's against me, and I'm puking. And and he's like, you know, he, and he'll say, I heard you say you were selling it. He goes, he goes, they're buying the crap out of it down there. So watch the order book because you will. It will help you know what to do. When you hit these transition prices, all right, in my newsletter, um, or when you're hitting highs and lows, it will help you. Um, as, as far as does, does fives, tens, or bonds lead, um, you know, I, you know, it, 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 it's not been an issue for me 
that I can really answer right now. Um, you know, the, the way the market's traded lately is, is the curb spread. Um, now, I'll, I mean, years ago, okay, because it's a, it's a great question, but we're not in that kind of market right now. Years ago, when I was first starting to trade bonds, locals would tell me, watch the five years. If the five years started to uptick, they would they start buying bonds. That was years ago. But there is something there. All right, but the, the market we're in right now is more a curb trade market. There will be times where you'll see bonds going off to a new high, and five years are still stagnant. Well, my pick guys will type into the room, they'll say they're, they're selling f twos and fives and they're buying bonds and ultras. So it explains why the market's not moving, uh, why the, 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 the market's not following. And it's that kind of market right now. It's not so much that you can look at, you know, fives and tens and stuff like that to see, you know, which one's leading. Um, yeah, and, and again, the order book is the dome. Um, you know, the, 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 the thing you put your, your trades in. I've heard it called the, the dome, you know, but the, the, you know, again, I mean, your, your trading platform where you actually park your bids and your offers and make your trades. That's what we call the order book. Um, yeah, and another good question. Do bonds do a fake out trade? Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, well, the, well, let's see. Let me, let me address this in two different points. And we, we won't go too much longer because I know we all want to get on with our day, but the, the bonds go off on their own is how I word it. All right. And again, I, I, hit, I keep going back to my newsletter because that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to build on the MTS room, all right? But the bond market is the one that will head fake you. And it may dive through support four or five ticks. Now, easier said than done because, I mean, what, 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 what you should do is look at the tens and fives. And if the tens and five did not do the same thing, then bonds are head faking. And you should try and stay, if you're long bonds, you should try and stay with them. Easier said than done. Usually what I do is I go ahead and puke the bonds, then look at the tens and fives and go, geez. And then what I'll do is I'll get long tens and fives. All right, I'll tend to not rebuy the bonds because I'm say, I'll say to myself, okay, that's your win, you beat me. You know, I'm trying to get better at saying, oh, I know what you're doing, but definitely the bonds will go off on their own. And always try and reference that by saying, hey, did 10 do the same thing? Did 5 do the same thing? If the answer is no, stay with your bond trade. Um, let's see. I only watch uh, numbers. Um, if you ask about trading levels, yeah, yeah. I, um, you know, again, I, I, there's, there's levels, and then I call them setups. Okay, as as I attracted some of these tremendous traders on the floor over the years, they would share things with me. You know, certain ways the bond market breaks out of ranges and pauses and pulls back and pauses. So. If we're in between my levels, we look for those setups, um, and that's what I do. And I'm just and and I'll just I'll say okay, well based on where the market is now, if it pulls back, it should go to here, and I'll park some orders up there and put a stop and let it just come to me. And 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 when I said earlier about you guys with the MTS clients and everything, you know when it comes to mixing and matching stuff for you, all right? Because you might say to me, look, I want your newsletter but I want to learn your setups. All right, fine. You know, we'll figure a price out. We'll give you a discount and we'll do it. All right, I mean, um, the VWAP, I, I, I hear it's very good. I don't use it, um, but I, I've heard it's very good. Uh, negative interest rates. Now, you know, yeah, that, yeah boy, that's, that's Swiss National Bank. Through the market for a ringer, didn't they? Wow. Um, you know, one thing I want to do is a question about negative interest rates here. 
And I, I, I got to talk to Bob about this. I mean, which might happen in May because it's too cold to cross the street to his office. But I have a guy that does research for me named Mike Williams. He's a PhD, and uh, I, I haven't mentioned his name to Bob, but this is the guy that, that will answer that question. Because what, what this guy does, and, and he does kind of tweak it to a trader mentality, but he just analyzes everything. JD, you name it, he analyzes it. He sends me his research on things like this thick. But he's the guy that will say, you know, based on what, what we're seeing in GDP and this and that and this, we, we're looking for the economy to slow. And, and that's, if I can get him to, present, to, to talk to you guys on presentation, you guys will love him. Because uh, for me, I don't care what interest rates go negative. All, all I want to do is see movement. If there's movement, then I can pick up a tick and a tick and a tick and a tick. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the ultra bond. Yeah, I won't touch them. <laughs> I mean, you want a risky market. Uh, ultra bonds, yeah. Um, bonds and S&P in different directions. We kind of touched on this a little earlier. I, I, I think it's just best for you when you turn your machine on. Look at the overnight session and see if you can see it because, I mean, you know, if, like I said earlier, if you look at it and open up in London at 1 o'clock and bonds uptick and go off 10, 12 ticks, and at 1 o'clock the S&P broke, you know, and then you look at, you know, then you see a few minutes later they both were going sideways and then the bonds rallied and the S&P broke, you say, hmm, maybe inverse trade today. So, yeah, I would certainly take a look at that. All right, well, I, I do want to thank you. I, I see a few people have said this was a nice presentation, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm really trying to help you guys, you know, use information that just comes at you as like a, like a dam breaks in the MTS room, and just, this information comes pouring at you, and how you can weave my stuff into it. And um, I, I, you have my email, and I, I'm going to be around. Um, I'm going to be in, you know, and, and I think one of the things we should really talk about, you, let me know, is what's better for you guys. If I give you set time, the mic goes on, or if I let you guys kind of mix and match stuff. I'm, uh, you know. Um, all right, and remember, I'm... You know, I'm giving you guys discounts, uh, you know, 25% off, you, but you have to email Bob at Mr. Top Step. You got to copy me on it. Um, if we have to do some tweaking, you know, I mean, again, it's like, you know, you're going to buy a car and you say, well, look, I, I don't want the rims. I want the sunroof. Okay, let's make it work for you. All right. Well, have a good uh, weekend, a uh, good rest of your trading day. Trading day. See, I'm so used to talking to it. <laughs> uh, have a good weekend. And um, hopefully I'll hear from some of you guys. And uh, I'll see you in the room on uh, Tuesday. Trading floor is closed Monday. I will not be on the floor Monday. Talk to you guys on Tuesday. Have a good weekend.